Blog Talk Radio. Are you ready for more propaganda? Well, you're in the wrong place at the right time. Colombo Chronicles is for critical thinkers. Let's welcome the consumer advocate for justice. Here's the Rose. Rose Colombo. Hi, everyone. It's the Rose. Rose Colombo right here for you every Wednesday. And boy, do we have a dynamic guest for you today. I'm very excited to have our returning guest with us today, Bill Bice. I will tell you a little bit about him in just a few minutes. Hope everyone's doing fine, so wake up, America. Is the American dream on the verge of the American nightmare? Or is the awakening for Americans a purging of the dark forces that came against America and Americans and are causing the sleepyheads until recently to awaken from their deep sleep and discover they are losing their freedom, their jobs, their businesses, and paying high prices for the necessities of life? How did this happen? It didn't happen just recently. It's been a long time coming. But again, there were sleepyheads around the world who didn't pay attention, except for those who were awake at a time that others were not. And they are working around the clock to inform you that, hey, you need to wake up and join this fight back to the American way of life freedom, liberty, rights, and restoring the United States Constitution so your kids and grandkids can grow up and they can be free and experience what you experienced in this wonderful country where there is supposed to be equal justice for all. But unfortunately, today, there is very little justice, and in some cases, there is no justice. So we have to turn all that around. We have to push back the scales of justice. And that's why I include the Justice Club on Colombo Chronicles. Because without justice, ladies and gentlemen, I am the author of the award-winning global book, Fight Back Legal Abuse, published in 2010. And the second version is coming out in fall of 2023. And you don't want to miss that because you will learn some tips on the judicial system that you are not going to get out of law books. You're not going to hear them from judges. You're not going to hear these tips from uh, lawyers, even your lawyer, (laughs) because the justice system remains a mystery. And so you need to find out what some of those mysterious um, agendas happen to be so you can protect yourself from injustices and from legal abuses. And my goal has always been uh, throughout these past three decades to um, getting younger every day uh, to to help victims of legal abuse become survivors. And that is through firsthand experience and knowledge and research and interviewing people around the country and helping them um, move on with their lives because you must become a survivor in order to move on or you remain a victim in a pity party and we don't have time for pity parties because we have to fight back to secure our borders and to secure our constitutional rights so uh, today this dynamic guest is going to awaken us to his um, knowledge and his experiences and he is going to awaken many of us from a deep sleep. And um, uh, he is not only a businessman, music, and he taught history, U.S. history. So you're in the right place at the right time because the topic of today's um, agenda is, is American history being erased? Well, let's not let that happen because there are things that are being erased from U.S. history in case you hadn't noticed. And on that note, I'm going to take a break and then we're going to enter into the world of authors and experts with our dynamic guest. I'll tell you a little history about him and then we will say hello to Bill Bies. So don't touch that dial. We'll be back in just a moment. 
Obamasaurus, the new book by Rose M. Colombo, is an updated version of a political satire that reflects the political roadmap of today's world, written with an Orwellian twist. Will humanity survive or suffer depopulation or extinction? Obamasaurus by Rose M. Colombo, available at Amazon.com. Yes, do yourself a favor and your friends and family and social media friends and listen up because you have the opportunity to read not just a book, but I say it is a it is a message for humanity worldwide and it will awaken the eyes of many. My former agent who passed away, God rest his soul, late 2022, said this book will shock a lot of people around the world. So you don't want to miss it, and it is an award winner, and it is rightfully so an award winner in my opinion. And also while you're looking up and Googling on Amazon.com, check out Is America Under Martial Law? And that will awaken your brain as well. And on that note, I want to say happy birthday to Bill Byes. It is his birthday today. He's another year younger, too. So we're just all getting younger, and that's the important thing, right? Exactly. So let me tell you a little bit about our guest. Bill Byes is the son of William W. and Geraldine F. Byes, born on April 26, 1951, in Amsterdam, New York. His father was a United States Army medic in the Korean War at the time of his birth. Growing up in the military, he was able to live in many different states and experience different parts of the country. This gave him insight into a different and um, into different insights on things politically and militarily than the average American. He graduated from Biloxi High School in Biloxi, Mississippi in 1969. He majored in music education U.S. History graduated from the University in Southern Mississippi in 1974. He married Val Henderson in December 1973. They have two beautiful grown daughters. He was a high school director as well and involved in many different sales ventures. He is currently a business owner in the manufacturing field. He has been involved in politics for many years, participated in local and state campaigns. This, however, in I believe it was 2016, um, was his first time that he uh, ran for public office. He ran for vice president, and uh, he was help, he was hoping to help promote limited government for we the people. So let's say happy birthday to Bill Buys and a big hello. Hi, Bill Buys. How are you doing today? I am doing great, Rose. It's good to talk to you again. Well, it's good to talk to you today, and I hope you're going to have a great day, a great birthday today. And it's always fun being another year younger, and we are looking forward to hearing about what you have to say uh, about our beautiful country that we all love, or most of us love. And (laughs) anyway, so Bill, let me start off with this question because There are over 40 Democrats who would like to make Washington, D.C. a state, which would give them two more Senate seats. And that is a problem for us uh, who don't want that to happen. So did the states create Washington, D.C., or did Washington, D.C. create the states? And what do you think about that? Who would be in charge and what would happen if they did make it turn it into a state? Well, first of all, a lot of people are are confused on that question. And when I did run for vice president on a third party ticket back in 2016, that was one of the questions that I did uh, address. Um, the states did create Washington D.C. Um, many years after the War for Independence. Uh, the Constitutional Convention was 1787. Uh, the War for Independence was from 1775 to 1781. And George Washington was our first 
president under the Constitution. He was sworn in in New York City. Four years later, when he had his second term, he was sworn in in Philadelphia, New York being our first nation's capital, Philadelphia being our second nation's capital. And it was during that four-year term that Washington, D.C. was created. And uh, actually, John Adams was the first president to live in the White House in Washington, D.C. And as you can see, the states definitely created Washington, D.C., and not the other way around. The other thing with people that are wanting to make Washington, D.C. a state, well, Washington, D.C. already sits on land donated from Maryland. It's a 10-square-mile area, and the purpose of Washington, D.C. was to have an area for our nation's capital that would not be subjected to any of the states. And the thought of creating a state for Washington, D.C., that should never be done because that was the whole purpose of that. Um, again, if they really want to make Washington, D.C. a state, just uh, what I've said for many years, probably 25 years, has been go ahead and dissolve Washington, D.C., get the land back to Maryland, and it'll be part of Maryland. That's how they can have their state. So I'm definitely opposed to having Washington, D.C. to be a state because, again, that was the whole purpose of having a nation's capital that was separate from the states. You know, like I said, that would totally mess that up. And, and there's just no way that it should be done. So, no, I'm totally opposed to even even considering that. But I am definitely in favor of dissolving Washington, D.C., because it's definitely gotten totally out of control. Um, the One of the things that I'm definitely opposed to is the federal income tax, because it's a direct violation of the Tenth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. What exists at the state level, such as a state income tax, cannot exist at the federal level, which is a federal income tax. And actually, it it's, doesn't fall under the 32 enumerated powers that Washington, D.C. is allowed to do. Washington, D.C. was never, ever, uh, the founders never intended for Washington, D.C. to be able to directly tax the American people. What they set up was an import, and that's what the federal government survived on from 1789 until 1913, when they passed an unconstitutional amendment that was never ratified, creating a federal income tax. I think it was only two states that actually um, accepted um, doing that. But it was only two states, and you actually need to do need to have three quarters of the states to amend the Constitution. But again, as I've said, the federal income tax is a direct violation of the um, of the Constitution. So again, well, that's, Washington, that's, that's D.C., really you know, uh, that's really interesting, Bill, because um, you know some people call it the District of Columbia, other people call it District of Corruption. And um, <laughs> right. because, exactly. <laughs> and so um, the the reason I was concerned about that too is because if um, the District of Columbia, uh, which holds itself up under the Constitution as the federal government, and they became a state, they would no longer be the federal government. So that would wipe out the federal tax, and it would wipe out all the federal laws, and they would. They would actually put them, in my opinion, uh, put them out of work because they would all have to resign because there would be no more federal government, in my opinion, because that's what Washington, D.C. was created to do, to be nonpartisan, to be represented by the, the parties, the two parties, major two parties, and and to uh, be and to and to come together to uh work for the people with the people by the people but uh for many decades now it appears they have been working against the people and for themselves and by themselves and imposing their will on the american people instead of 
um, being paid by the taxpayers to do the will of the American people. So I see that move to be very disastrous to the federal government because according to the Constitution, in my opinion and analysis, they would no longer exist as the federal government. They would be a state government in, if they became a state. Is, is that so far off, that theory? No, that, that's, pretty, that's pretty spot on. That's another angle to look at it. But again, they were the land, that, the 10 square mile area that makes Washington, D.C. is all land that was donated from the state of Maryland. So Washington, D.C. Has, sits on Maryland land. So, you know, if they want to if they want to have if they want to be declared state, well, they're already sitting on Maryland. So. And, and that would violate it, and that would actually, in a sense, uh, dissolve Washington, D.C., though that would be definitely um, – war would kind of be declared on that one. There would be a lot of people fussing on that. But I, I, like I said, they have overstepped their bounds. Um, and this uh, – more, more things have been have been done through the years to kind of head in that direction with the – uh, with Washington, D.C. taking more and more control and not just addressing the 32 enumerated powers. The founders, when they when they did the Constitutional Convention, they gave 32 items that the federal government could do, and if it's not one of those 32, it's then handed over to the states, and then, of course, the final, the final owner of the country is we the people. So, Washington well, D.C. is done is is not the top dog. The states are, and then the ultimate top dog is we the people. Well, it seems to me that they've forgotten that we the people are the government, and that they are our employees, and we employ them, and we provide them with exactly. all these wonderful benefits that you know, vacations and pensions and uh, Cadillac health insurance. They don't have to sign up for Obamacare. We do, or be punished uh, if we don't. And uh, But they don't have to. Illegals don't have to. Uh, the refugees from the Middle East didn't have to. They didn't have to sign up, pay up, or be fined. And at one point, they said that you'd even go to jail if you didn't sign up and pay up, even though it's a consumer product. It's not a... Um, it's a consumer product and a consumer service that Americans have always had the free will to either purchase or not purchase from private corporations. So the federal government, who has forgotten they have limited power under the U.S. Constitution, has put their big boot on the healthcare industry, in my opinion, and now they are saying, you know, do as we tell you because we're going to ration and deny health care to you, uh, but you still have to pay up, and we're going to include euthanasia, mandated taxpayer-funded abortions around the world that you will pay for, even if you don't want to, and um, which is a depopulation program, and we're going to force you to pay for mandated taxpayer, um, let's call them jabs. We won't mention the word of any any type of jab. And um, you will pay for that if we so mandate worldwide with your tax dollars. So, uh, and then, uh, you know, with all this, you know, in a 2021 bill, I uh, posted on Facebook, which I guess they didn't like, that um, there were not 12 million illegals in our country uh, any longer. It had to be like 30 million. And uh, about a week later, uh, Stanford posted that their study on Facebook, they posted it, that their study uh, came up with 30, no, 29.5 million illegals. So it was very close to the right number of guesstimation. And um, we have to pay for their health care too. So I, I just, you know, I, I mean, what happened, what I want to ask you as the expert on on uh, history, U.S. history, what happened to the Constitution of uh, – what happened to the Constitution, period? Why why do we have open borders and why are we paying for 30 million – probably, I would guess, 35 million now uh, 
illegal health care in our country when we are rationed and denied health care in some cases? Well, first of all, we shouldn't have open borders. Um, my grandparents on my mom's side immigrated from Italy. Uh, they were born in Italy. They came to America. They became American citizens. I grew up the first six, six years of my life. I grew up in their house. So I'm very familiar with immigration, and I'm very familiar with growing up in a, in a two-language house, especially when, when there were a few arguments, and then it went to mainly Italian, um, <laughs> which was quite which was quite enjoyable thinking back on the, thinking was, back on those times. I can but, relate to that because I grew up with my yeah Italian grandparents too in their home, so I I totally relate to all well. of that. <laughs> and, oh, absolutely. And the, and the way but immigrants they, were then compared to now. Right, they became Americans. I don't know. I don't. I know very little about Italian history because they did become Americans, and my grandfather flew his 48 star flag and I still have that flag and you know proud of it and I knew about all the American holidays because they became Americans and if people come to this country they need to do it legally not illegally and they need to apply for citizenship the correct way and become citizens but these people that are here illegally they need to be deported. I, I hate to say it that way, but as soon as they cross our border illegally, they have broken our laws, and they shouldn't be coddled. They shouldn't be given free health care or free anything. Um, actually, when my grandparents came in the early 1920s, uh, now over 100 years ago, when they came, they weren't given anything other than the opportunity to get a job or build a business of their own. Uh, they were they were totally on their own, and of course they had family members that were already here. That's another thing that helped them come to America, and all of them either got a job or created their own business. I know that my grandmother's brother uh, was uh, made shoes, and so he had his own he had his own shop. And it's it's just you know either they created their own business or they worked a job. And and they well, supported this, this, themselves. They weren't they weren't looking for welfare, and the last thing on earth that any of them would do would even be consider welfare of any kind. Yes, and and the thing is that today, when I was going to mention, is that they all appear to you know to come here and demand all of these entitlement programs paid by the American people. Now, of course, you know, we have a heart and we feel sorry for people who are born in countries that are are not fair to their citizens, but we are being disrespected, in my opinion, because our grandparents and maybe even great-grandparents of others came to this country and they did work hard to build a life for themselves. They didn't ask for welfare from the government. And they didn't expect anything from the government. It would be an embarrassment. And that's how I viewed it. And so they, you know, they did whatever they had to to survive. And they did survive. And they did whatever they could to make America better. And they didn't complain about America. They loved America. Uh, My grandparents told me they kissed the ground uh, when they landed in New York, they kissed the ground here uh, on American soil, and they were so happy and proud to be Americans. And they were, you know, they they self-taught themselves to speak. Well, it was broken English, but they taught themselves. And um, now today, we are having to not only pay for uh, everything to be written in I don't know how many different languages, I mean, if you open a package, you have to look for English now. English was the priority language in America, and the reason for that is so that everyone can communicate. And instead of the uh, the illegals or even the naturalized immigrants, some of them, uh, learning to speak English, uh, and we're supposed to accommodate them and pay for all of this additional uh, literature in all these different languages 
and we're supposed to accommodate them on their foods, on their culture, on their religion, on this and that and the other, which is changing the American way of life and erasing our history, which is the title of this show. So I'm very concerned about these changes that are being erased in our country. For example, Bill, when BLM and Antifa rioted and had their insurrection that was called the peaceful protest, they actually destroyed historical monuments, vandalized them, government property, government vehicles, police vehicles, taunted the police, taunted civilians, and they um, they weren't obeying the uh, that we had to obey or get arrested and find the uh, lockdowns, and they were dancing in the streets. And, um, well, Rome was burning down. And my question, my question yes. to you is, they were destroying our, his, including my family is Colombo, so they're related to Christopher Columbus. And then General Robert E. Lee, uh, my kids have a uh, um, gene- genetic link to him as well from the paternal side. So... Um, I'm just like, okay, so you're destroying the statue of General Robert A. Lee. You're destroying government property of Christopher Columbus, which was a great story that kids learned in school, and we did murals, and it was a celebration of America and the Native American Indians and the pilgrims, and we have Thanksgiving Day because of it. But all of these traditions, these monuments, even vandalized Abraham Lincoln's monument, knocked down monuments and statues, and they were not held liable or accountable. But, Bill, if you walk on a government property and they say you're trespassing, you, as a natural-born American, will be arrested. Or if you trespass on somebody's private property and they call the police, you, as a natural-born American, even if you were not had any intent to do anything wrong could possibly be arrested but we have all these unidentified people now who come here and they are not arrested for anything that they are doing like trespassing on private property in america and crossing over into our borders and we are we are coming last in our and those historical monuments and those historical statues really bother me, certain group of people who have disdain for U.S. history, whether it's good or bad, all countries have good and bad history. It needs to remain in place so that our future generations know how our country was built and who was involved. Explain that to our audience and to me, how that is being allowed. Yeah, we well, even our politicians today, many of them refer to America as a democracy, and America is not. The founders created a constitutional republic. They actually, the 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 thought of a democracy was actually brought up, and it was rejected by the founders. They did not want a democracy because a democracy is basically mob rule. What they wanted was a republic, which is a representative government. And the founders set up a system of government where we have the president, we have the House and the Senate, and we have the judiciary. We have the three branches of government. And then the House and the Senate, the way the founders set it up, was they set up the House of Representatives to be uh, districts in each of the states, you know, congressional districts, like Mississippi has four congressional districts. What does California have, like about 30 or 35? That's quite a few congressional districts because it's based on population. But each of the states have two United States senators, and the founders set it up for the senators to be appointed by their state's legislatures because they wanted that branch of the Congress to be totally controlled by the states. They did not want popular election of U.S. senators. They had that in the House. They wanted that by popular vote by the people, but they wanted the Senate, two senators per state, 
and for them to be appointed by the state's legislature, and therefore they would be directly responsible to the state legislature and to the governor of each of those states. And if they didn't vote to to represent and support their state, they would be immediately removed from office. This all changed. Again, another unconstitutional thing. This all changed on December 23rd of 1913 when they said that the states turned over that bill to no longer appoint their senators, but to allow them to be elected by popular vote, which didn't happen. Again, you, to amend the Constitution, you need three quarters of the states. And I think it was only one or two states that even thought about agreeing to that, but none of the other states did. So for now, over 100 and it's been over 110 years, we have been electing by popular vote U.S. senators illegally. They still should be appointed by their state legislatures. This was never ratified correctly. It never went through the amendment process. And I've, I've stated this for many years. And it's all it's all backed by fact. It never it never was done. And they've done quite a few quite a few amendments to the Constitution that were not ratified correctly. But again, most of our politicians today think we have a democracy. And we don't. We have a constitutional republic. But again, we have to keep that constitutional republic after the founders um, when they when they signed the declaration of independence they created a republic and i remember uh, one of the one of the women in philadelphia asked benjamin franklin after the unanimous uh, signing of the declaration of independence she said mr franklin what form of government do we have and he said madam we have a republic if we can keep it and that's the truth because well that, that reminds the, me of the united and that was and that oh, was in july of 1776 that was even that was that was over a decade before the the constitutional convention well it reminds me of our us supreme court that seems to have changed as well because um the U.S. Supreme Court approved of, let's say, Obamacare, and um, they knew that that was a consumer product and a consumer service, and that it was a freedom and a choice of the American people to purchase with their own earnings after taxes. So people purchased health insurance after they had paid their taxes with their own money, making their own choice uh, and deciding right. if they needed it or didn't need it. And I believe that that, that bordered on, and I wrote to uh, the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, and I told him that it bordered on, on extortion. And, of course, I don't know, he may have reptiled you my, my, uh, you my, find, my letter. You won't find health care. Right. You won't find health care in the Constitution, and you definitely won't find it among the 32 enumerated powers. The federal government is not supposed to have anything to do with health care. So just why not. is the U.S. Well, Supreme Court making laws? That's what it appears to me to be doing. To. Yeah, they're not supposed That's... to make laws. That's one of the things. They are supposed to – the main thing that the Supreme Court is supposed to do – is when the House and the Senate pass a bill, they are supposed to rule on whether or not that bill is constitutional or unconstitutional. That's really all they're supposed to do. And they don't do that. And that's one of the things they are supposed to do and required to do. So Doesn't the U.S. Constitution the require that all laws must be according to the Constitution and the will of the majority of the legal Americans? Yes. Well, they are doing that. No, they're not doing it, and Congress is not doing what they're supposed to do. But they, they, they violate the Constitution on a daily basis. That's what the Congress does, and that's pretty much what the Supreme Court does, because they do well, not follow the letter of the law. Well, they didn't follow any laws when they 
they approved no. of Obamacare because they didn't read the 2,700 pages. I read it with Liberty Council, and we were opposing it because we read it, and we knew what was in it. And then they said, well, you know, we have to approve it in order to know what's in it. Well, what if it says, you know, we're going to line all Americans up and we're going to just wipe them out? You know, I mean, they didn't read it. What if it said that? It's mandated that all Americans stand up against this uh, wall here because you're going to wipe all of you out. So how how insane is it that you can have 2,700 pages of laws, regulations, mandates, fees, fines, taxes, penalties, punishments, and they didn't care. Right. They don't care. <laughs> they really don't care. <laughs> because they, they exempted themselves. That's, they exempted themselves from Obamacare. Right. That's why. That's what, they, that's what they always do. They have free health care. They have, uh, as soon as they're in office for two years, they have a lifelong pension. And it's, of course, of course, they voted. They voted for themselves. There's no oversight committee regulating that, but there should be, and it should be a group of citizens, non-lawyers, that that are an oversight committee for the Congress, both the House and the Senate. It should be that way, where we have, you know, it might be a committee of 25 people, or you know, something like that, uh, and they should be able to. Uh, dictate the Congress what they can and can't do. And it all needs well, I, to be following, following the Constitution. But they don't do it. Yeah. They just I've ignore suggest, it. I've suggested that for years where we have to have more oversight of citizens who uh, oversee what all of them are doing uh, all the way to the top because um, sometimes they need guidance. Maybe they aren't sure, you know, that what they're – maybe they just need guidance from outsiders, the lay people who it's going to affect, along with their families and friends. Maybe they aren't realizing, you know, that, gee, they aren't getting the full picture. You know what I'm saying? They're just getting it from right. their advisors. Maybe their advisors are biased, you know what I'm saying? So lots of things can be interpreted different ways. So. I think that we should have committees of um, of people, of lay people, who have um, merit to be on that committee, and um, and and have at least access to what they intend to pass that is affecting our lives, not only our lives but future generations that could possibly deny us our freedom and wrongfully be taking our money in the form of taxes. Yes. Yeah, it should be it should be definitely made up of natural born citizens. And there's been debate over what a natural born citizen is, but it's offspring of two American citizens. That's what it's a natural two, born citizen it's is. It's two legal Ameri- it's what it is according to the Book of Nations, the Law of Nations is a book that judges and lawyers and law professors use as their Bible to define the law. It's been used forever. It's a very old book and it defines everything in the Constitution. And um and it is two legal Americans who give birth to a baby on U.S. soil or foreign or protected foreign soil. So it's very simple, but they convoluted it because they always convolute everything when they want to get their way. And so instead of following the law, it's so simple. Everybody knows that it's a baby born to two legal Americans on U.S. soil or protected U.S. soil. It's so simple. And it's for every country, not just ours. That's the way it is. That's how you become an American, right? Exactly. And growing up in the military, usually we had someone from the military come to the school once a year and explain all of this to us. Because like my my dad was stationed in Alaska. You had people stationed in Germany and Japan and France and many different Air Force bases all around the world and and Army bases and Navy bases. And you have... You had kids growing up all over the world and born in those hospitals and those and those uh, base facilities 
And so if you're born in Japan, are you an Amer- are you a natural born citizen? Of course you are if your parents are American citizens. As long as they're exactly. American citizens, you're and natural pers- born. You- Personally, Bill, I would go even as far as to say that Natural born Americans are coming last in this country. We have through the uh, abortion and contraceptive pills and all of these different uh, surgeries they're doing now, uh, which are intrusive to minor children. The judges and the justices have a duty, a fiduciary duty, to protect the safety and welfare of every minor child and monitor them. And they are not um, fighting against these um minor children who don't realize that if they are convinced that they should get this particular surgery, uh, then they will not be able to procreate in the future, which are all depopulation programs of humanity. That's why people need to read my book, Obamasaurus, and awaken to the um, into what's happening to humanity through a fictional adventure story, a political satire, and it's a message for the world. And uh, it's an awakening, and it's a God uh, inspirational awakening uh, for humanity to wake up to the fact that He ordered us to procreate, to be heterosexual pro- and procreate, so that we could fill the earth and have sovereign nations of ethnicities and races and cultures and civilizations and their their food, their clothing, their music, their dancing, their instruments, their laws, their their cultures. And and that's why we love going to other countries so we can meet them and we can see how they live and we can, you know, try their foods and, and their dancing and whatever they're doing, you know, and their culture and their art and everything. This is like uh, wiping out all that has been created by God so that we could enjoy each other as brothers and sisters in this little earth because it's getting smaller and smaller. And so, um, you know, there's the six countries, Bill, six countries in Europe that are on the borderline of being extinct in the future because of these deep, of these, um, you know, um, abort your babies and all these other uh, depopulation programs. So what do you think, what I wanted to ask you, is where in the Constitution does it state you should depopulate your your citizens? (laughs) I I know. It's not funny, but I can't help it. Where in the Constitution? I know. It's It's just not there. That's what they do. They they ignore the 32 enumerated powers that they are supposed to do and do many unconstitutional things on a daily basis. There's usurping the American people, and it's it's crazy. The op- the open border policy it's wrong. If you want to come to this country, do it legally. If you come across the border illegally, you should be deported immediately. And if you've committed crimes, you need to be put in jail, you need to be tried, that needs to be taken care of. And then if you wind up going to prison for a few years, as soon as you're done with your prison term, take you to the border and say goodbye. I mean, it's – and the other thing and the way to take care of all of these illegals in this country, if we turned off the money, if they didn't have free housing, if they didn't have free health care, if they didn't have a welfare check every month and most of their most of their welfare checks were to supply them with food and rent and everything is more than people get on social security that have worked all their lives paying into social security whether they wanted to or not they had to and paying into medicare whether they wanted to or not they had to yet these illegals are getting unlimited health care they're getting more money than people on Social Security get, and it's all wrong. It's all unconstitutional. But the easiest way to get rid of these people that are here illegally is cut the money off. If all of a sudden they're not having their rent paid, they're not having their food paid for, they're not having health care, 
if all of a sudden to live here, they've got to fund it themselves, they'll go back to where they came from. And if they don't, they'll figure out a way of how to support themselves. And it won't take long for a lot of these people to go back where they came from. And I don't really want to be mean to them. They've come here because our politicians basically have not only invited them here, but a lot of times have bussed them here or flown them in here. And well, we have I mean, illegals in our government. We have illegals yeah. working in our government. Yes, we do. And we do. Uh, I won't we mention have, the, We have lawyers who came here as illegals and third, are practicing law. I won't law. mention a certain – right. I won't mention our, our current vice president because she's not a citizen. Oh, we yeah. I mean, we're perfectly aware of that, and mm-hmm. and um, I mean, uh, and you know, my, my opinion right. is that only natural-born Americans should be in Congress, in the Senate, in the Department of Justice, and in the um, and especially in in as president and vice president. And um, right. I, I truly believe that it's our country. No other country will allow us. Go to the Middle East, go to China, go to Cambodia, go to North Korea, go to Vietnam, go to all of these countries and or even the UK or any of these countries. Tell them, you know, I'm an American. I've come here. I want you to pay for my housing, my food. I want health care. I want a car. <laughs> I want a cell phone. <laughs> and I want to be president of your, com- of your country. Right. Yeah, they would. How many are going to do that? that? And yeah. I am going to walk across your border illegally, and you just step aside because these are my demands, and I expect this is my entitlement program. Here's my list of things I want done for me. And by the I way, if I want you to that. change the foods that you serve because they don't, they don't meet my requirements. I know. It's now, that crazy. sounds really crazy, doesn't it? But is that it's not exactly what both. we're doing? But isn't that but what we're doing? That's right. That is what we're doing. It's crazy. And if you walk oh, across And let's the not forget, I want to get a degree for free from your country as well. Exactly. Let's, let's not if forget you walk that. Across the border, if you walk across border illegally to Mexico, you are going to be put in a, in a prison that not only would you not want to be in prison there, you wouldn't really even want to visit the place. <laughs> you know? And you're going to be thrown in a hellhole. You're going to get probably raped. You're probably going to get beaten. You're probably going to get starved. Let's just face it. You're going to be in a hellhole, and they're not going to contact anybody to tell them that you're there. No, no. But I I think what they do is they put you in jail for two years, and then they take you to the border and say adios. And if you're stupid enough to go back in again, you're going to prison for 10 years, and you probably won't survive. That's what but they the do. Problem, like, the other problem, though, Bill, is that they're not just like um, uh, our former president said. He said, you know, they're they're sending their bad dudes into our country. They're sending spies. Yes. They're sending traffickers. They're sending people who are trafficking guns and and drugs into the inner cities. But this didn't just happen. I mean, can't blame this administration. This has been and going on for decades. Yes, it has. We're dealing with, you know, drug dealers coming across the border, human traffickers, the human traffickers trafficking children and women into this country. And, of course, we have human trafficking all around the world. And we're not doing anything to stop it. And it's very simple well, to stop it. You just don't allow it. Human beings have become the endangered species, especially the babies and the children, because yeah. um, we have a whole list of endangered animals and bugs and turtles and everything else that you will be fined $50,000 to go to prison if you injure them or kill them or remove them from their environment. But if you do that to uh, people, um, well, so be it, you know, I mean, you just, you know, and, and, and if you wipe out, if you, yeah, and, and they have a whole assembly line of the, of using young girls who are pregnant uh, uh, on a assembly line of uh, aborting their babies to sell the baby parts for tons of money for big profits. And, um, you know, that is called um, uh, 
uh, oh, organ harvesting that they do over in communist China, but they put the focus over on communist China and said, look how bad those people are. And they said, oh, but over here in uh, the PP uh, uh, facilities, that's, that's, that's beneficial because that's a mother's right to do that. Uh, and even though her health isn't at risk or uh, she wasn't raped or there wasn't incest because I, you know, I, I, but I mean, just to, just to kill a life, a human life or leave them on a, uh, in a closet or on a table with no human touch and no food, which is infanticide. We have actual Americans in this country who are all for that. It's so unbelievable to me or pull the, pull the plug on granny, you know, or uh, somebody who's got autism or we have people who actually are for these agendas to eliminate the life of human beings. But yet if you dare touch a turtle out in the desert or you kill a certain bug or a bird or whatever, which I don't want to happen, of course, but they should be protected. But God in the Bible said, we, the human beings, are because we have souls, are over the animals and the birds and every other creature on this planet. But it's turned upside down now, where we are the ones who are being hunted, and they are being protected, along with the illegals, though, <laughs> in America. If you're an yes, illegal, you're yes, protected, yes. too. Very true. Very true. So... So going back to our topic about is American history being erased, aren't all of these agendas erasing our U.S. history or not? They are, and they are agendas. Uh, another thing uh, that probably should be done, if, if everyone would – I remember in school, we, there would be a morning prayer and then the Pledge of Allegiance. And I think I think some of these politicians need to start reciting the – the Pledge of Allegiance, because it says, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, not into the democracy for which it stands. So I think I think if our politicians would, would recite it, maybe they would start calling this country a republic and not a democracy. It's, I, I always, I always, uh, I, I like how Glenn, Glenn Beck says, I have to I have to grab the duct tape and wrap my head so my head doesn't explode because these these politicians that are supposed to be our representatives they just don't understand. They don't understand. They understand. The There's government. something else going on behind the the the, the, the scenes because no. uh, they grew up reciting the the Pledge of Allegiance right. in public schools, and right. and yet. They, they, we see the the young people in, who are into sports kneeling at the national anthem. I mean, it just boggles my mind. How could you not? How could you be getting millions of dollars to throw a ball or kick a ball or whatever you're going to do, and think that it isn't because of America and the Constitution? Right. And all the heroes right. that died on the battlefields, and all the. Um, the people who uh, who who fought for this country since it was created. Yeah. How could you possibly think that you should disrespect uh, this country when because you have some athletic talent? Thank God, God bless you. That it's okay to disrespect the country that's making you wealthy and allowing you to do what you your dream was and your passion and people are paying to to support you to go to these games and it's because the people are supporting you who love this country um that you are being able to elevate yourself to a new level of lifestyle and have whatever you want material wise but what about let me ask you this: What about our Christian Foundation? Do they do they not have that Christian Foundation inside their hearts, bodies, and souls and minds that they would kneel down at the national anthem that God inspired someone to create, or the Pledge of Allegiance to respect your country, where you are being able to elevate yourself, right? Free it's, to um, elevate yourself. Right. 
Well, there there has to be some re-education of the American people, but it has to start from the children. And the, the schools have been usurped. Um, they're, it's government propaganda. They're not schools. I graduated back in 1969. It's not the same school system. I was a public school teacher. I was a high school band director. I did it for eight years. It was a different school system. It wasn't the same school system that I grew up in. And, but you have to, there has to be a grounding of the children to let them know this is the country that we live in, but it needs to be based on truth. It does not need to be based on a political agenda. And that's what we're living in today is a political agenda. And it's wrong. It is so wrong because God blessed this land. And he, everybody that was innate to our soil, born to two legal Americans on U.S. soil, a protected U.S. soil, is a natural-born American. And our soil is blessed, and that's with plenty. And that's why if God... Uh, the nuns, I went to Catholic school, taught us from a very young age, you have to pray for world peace. All of our brothers and sisters, you have to pray for uh, for world peace because if people turn their backs on God, America is going to suffer greatly because God blessed America to help the rest of the world and help feed the rest of the world uh, in countries that are not as blessed. And, um, and, and, you know, the land of uh, milk and honey. Right. And um, we have to be grateful. But unfortunately, we've uh, just about run out of time here. So I want your time to shine. So, Bill, leave your message to America and the world and anything you'd like to say. Okay. Well, things have to change in America if we are going to get our republic back. The Constitution needs to be reestablished. Our politicians need to realize that they are public servants. Uh, They are not our leaders. They are not our bosses. The American people over the politicians, they are supposed to be public servants. They are supposed to follow their oath of office. They are supposed to follow the Constitution, and they are supposed to represent the people that elected them. Most of them do not. They think they're the boss. This is at at both the state level and federal level. And I've dealt with state politicians and I've dealt with federal politicians. And they're all in the same boat. Uh, They just feel like they're the big cheese and they don't understand that they are public servants. So that's the biggest thing I can say. But it needs, it comes back to educating the children on what we actually have. And the school system has an agenda and that's not it so that needs to be addressed too so there's a lot of things that can be readdressed and maybe we can get back together again rose down the road and talk about some of those things absolutely and god bless you bill buys and thank you so much for joining us on columbo chronicles uh today and of course we will do it again. and uh, you have a very happy birthday bye-bye thank you again rose You're welcome. And that's all we have time for, folks. But be sure to get a copy of Obamasaurus. And uh, remember, God loves you, and so does the Rose. Obamasaurus, the new book by Rose M. Colombo, is an updated version of a political satire that reflects the political roadmap of today's world. Written with an Orwellian twist. Will humanity survive or suffer depopulation or extinction? Obamasaurus by Rose M. Colombo. Available at Amazon.com. Well, my friends, time flies. And now is the time to say goodbye. Thanks so much for being part of the Colombo Chronicles family. You are appreciated. Please do it now. Bookmark. Push that like share, and follow button. Oh, and don't forget to comment below and stay in touch. Make your family part of the Colombo family. Until next Wednesday at noon, remember, God loves you, and so does the Rose.